Hello and welcome to this week's Australian Stock Market Report. This week we'll look at why now more than ever, you need to be more informed and educated if you want to gain better returns. Then we'll get into the market so I can share with you my thoughts on the Australian stock market, where it's heading along with answering all of your questions and looking at stocks for you. Hello, I'm Dale Gillen, the Chief Analyst at Wealth Within, and we're Australia's most trusted stock market educators. Now, before we move on, thank you for showing your support for our channel and hitting that subscribe button. Remember, as you subscribe, click the bell on the right of it so you keep up to date with our latest videos. Also, remember to tune into our live Australian stock market show every Tuesday, 7 to 8 p.m. Australian Eastern Time. Now, this is the show where you get to ask us, the stock market education and trading experts, to look at your favourite stocks and answer all of your questions. This year, the world has been thrust into turmoil with growing fears around the full effects of COVID-19 pandemic. Concerns are not just about our health, although understandably this is our immediate focus, but also the growing concerns amongst ordinary Australians around the global economic climate and how we can secure our financial future, not just personally, but as a nation. Right now, our security and safety are being challenged and these basic physiological needs have to be met in order for everyone to move forward. Now, there's an old saying that every cloud has a silver lining, but is the current situation right now really a silver lining? In my opinion, nothing gets people more motivated to change than fear and uncertainty. And you must admit, COVID-19 has certainly created a lot of that. Australians are experiencing a lot of fear of the unknown because of the unpredictable nature of the current global situation. Well, we can all guess no one knows exactly where we'll be in 12 months' time and what our personal lives will look like. In the current situation, more Australians are starting to pay attention, but more importantly they have become motivated to ask some tough questions. I'm not just talking about health-related questions, but questions about where their money is invested, what they should be investing in, and how safe is that investment. Now, over the past few months, I've been inundated with Australians asking these exact questions, in addition to wanting to know how they can profit more from the stock market so they can secure an income stream if the climate does not improve. So what questions are you asking and what answers are you getting in relation to investments so that you can secure your future? Because right now it's important to understand your level of exposure to Australian equities, particularly if the stock market crashes again as some experts are predicting. It is far better to take positive action and be armed with a plan before something occurs rather than acting on fear as this reduces much of the uncertainty we've been experiencing in 2020. The one thing that is certain is that dark clouds will continue to roll in from time to time but the opportunity for you is how you handle them. Making a choice to pay attention and become educated and informed with a solid plan is not only wise, it will also ensure you will be confident about what to do when this occurs. In other words, it is far better to be educated and informed before the clouds appear rather than after. So what were the best and worst performing sectors last week? Well, while the All Ordinaries Index has been slightly bullish last week, again it was far from convincing. As such, some sectors rose strongly whilst others did not perform that well. Consumer staples had led the way up over 4%, followed by financials up almost 4%, whilst information technology and consumer discretionary were up almost 3%. The worst performing sectors included communication services, which was down nearly 5%, followed by utilities, and that was down around 2%, whilst materials, whilst it was up 2% earlier in the week, it closed for the week just in the red. Looking at the ASX top 100 stocks, the best performance last week included Treasury Wines Estate, which ended the week up over 17%, Flight Centre was up almost 15%, whilst Reliance Worldwide Corporation was up over 11%, followed by Qantas and QB Insurance, which were both ending the week up over 10%, as did AMP. Now, the worst performers included Northern Star Resources down over 10%, followed by AGL Energy, Challenger and Seek, with all down over 8%. So what do I expect in the market moving forward? Well, let's get into the charts for our S&P 500 All Ordinaries Index update for this week. We'll also answer your questions and look at the stocks that you've chosen for me. Please remember that this report is an educational tool. While Wealth Within holds an Australian Financial Services license, the information featured in this program 
is general in nature and therefore should not be relied upon. Before making any investment decisions, you should consult a licensed professional who can advise whether your investment decisions are appropriate for you. We hope that you enjoy this week's report. Well, last week was an exciting week on our market because it traded higher and more importantly, it stayed up on Friday or it closed up on Friday. I think it was the first Friday in about two or three weeks where the market actually closed higher than it opened on Friday, ending the week on a high note. So let's go and have a look at the chart. Now on your screen, as I still haven't changed this chart other than adding these green areas, and I'll explain those in a minute for you, but I've left those arrows on because remember a few weeks back or a month back, I said we had two different scenarios. One, we'd had the peak on the 9th of June moving down into a low, or the second one was we would actually move up into a high somewhere up in around that 6,600 point sort of range. Now, up until the last couple of weeks, or up until last week, where it broke above the high here of the, the weekend in 24th of July at 6272. It was still possible that this first scenario was in play, that we could have just turned around and gone down into a low sometime late August, early September. But if you remember back on my previous reports back through here, I was saying that if the high has happened earlier, the low will happen earlier. If the high happens later, then the low will happen later. So at this point in time, this close here that we saw last week, it you can see there at 6261, it's the highest close that we've had since right back here in early February there. So you can see there, or late February, that bar there on the 28th or the weekend in the 28th of February, that's the highest close prior to last week. So, and we're now moving up. Now, my thinking is, this is where I was saying we need to get above 6,200 points and close above it before I'm more bullish and this is really why because this is a resistance level around six nearly 6,200 points the next level there is six six to six seven um, and I think that will pull this run up we might see a bit of a vertical run up for one to four weeks and one more one more week to four more weeks before starting to move down into this area and this area can happen if I get my little crosshairs out you can see this area can start sort of from anywhere in the next couple of weeks for 4th of September all the way through to sort of nearly mid-October there so my expectation is we'll have a peak in the next one to four weeks probably more like two to three weeks max uh, and then move down into this green area right now what not that means it doesn't necessarily mean to sell all of your stocks at the moment this is where a lot of people get what us experts talk about if we think the market's bearish sometimes people just dump their stocks and sit back and wait. What we're saying is the market's likely to turn soon. And what that means is slow down your buying. Don't necessarily start buying more, buy, or buy a lot more because you might be buying right at the top just before it tips away. And you don't want to be buying in at this price. Watch it go up a little bit and then come down for you to only be in a loss situation. Um, but what we also say is just make sure you're protecting your downside. And that's by having stop losses, etc. Um, if you're not sure how to set stop losses or what the right place is, and most people are like that. It's amazing when we're re researching or surveying people on our website to fill out the surveys. Most people have no idea how to get out. They know how to buy, but they don't know when the right time is to get out. And, and at this point in time where the market is searching for a high, um, that's the time that you really do need to understand what an exit strategy is. Because if the US market does start to melt down, which a lot of experts are expecting it, it's rising on a lot of high air. P ratios are very high over in the US. There's a lot of, there's more bubbles, I suppose, in the US than it is in Australia. So if the US starts to come down, our market will do that as well. But uh, at this point in time, just slow your buying down, get ready to exit. That's really what I'm saying. But bullish for the next maybe two to four weeks, probably two to three weeks max. Uh, that's my thoughts on the Australian market at this point in time. But let's get into the questions that we have for today. Now, the first question we have today is from Nidal, who says, Hi, guys, I love your show. Watching from Germany. Fantastic, mate. Um, I'm sure you're not getting up at 3 in the morning or 2 in the morning to watch our show, but thank you for watching it. He says, Watch your opinion about Mesoblast. We uh, we also had uh, a few questions on Mesoblast as well. Another one was from Abhaya, who said, Hi, darling, Janine, nice show and really appreciate it. I was a victim of uh, Mesoblast insider trading today so we've had a few of those well i know we had a lot of comments this week we said a lot of questions on stocks we've had a lot of comments because we did uh, did some videos on superannuation and some other topics that people wanted to comment about um, which is fantastic if people are comment on i don't mind that um, but we didn't have a lot of physical stock questions but let's go and have a look at mesoblast to see exactly what happened there now mesoblast was um, looking at um, if we bring it up here um, on the screen i'll just get rid of this so you 
can see it all. This is Meso Blast here. I'll just expand it out, and you can see this m big, big move up that's had recently. But what they're talking about, this is a daily chart. So they were talking about being burnt on Meso Blast last Tuesday. But if I just get here and I just expand that out so you can see the, the bar's a little bit easier. So you can see this massive drop through here, and I'll put I'll show you exactly what it was from that high there down to there. There was 31% drop. Then it was down 36.96% drop, and since then it's gone right back up. And what was going on is you'll see the market actually um, playing around with things like that. When you're waiting for announcements and you're in a stock, uh, you and or you're getting in at the last minute before those announcements are due and everything else, you really are in that danger zone or speculating that something positive is going to happen. Now there is positive news um, for Mesoblast, that's why it's up at the moment. But always remember the big end of town, know exactly what you're doing. Don't ever think that you've got insider knowledge. Don't ever think that you've got the edge on the market. The big end of town know exactly what you are doing and what retail investors are doing and retail traders are doing. Because the brokers know what they do, you're doing because they exactly see that. And I remember in years gone by, I've spoken to brokers who were um, the preferred broker of some educators and they used to tell me all the time, they already knew before the market opened when they're going to get a lot of trades based on the trade setups this educator was um, teaching people and it was interesting and the big end of town pretty much everybody knew it as well and what was going on is the big end of town would play that and go against those traders and take their money and push the stock or the market down if they if those traders were trading along and doing the opposite so again like support and resistance lines every single person on the planet knows about support and resistance so i don't use them as a buy and sell signal but there are a lot of things that happen in the market place that um, police don't think that you're smarter than the big end of town if that makes sense they will play with this all the time insider trading is illegal but it's so 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 hard to prove there's very few cases that i've seen in the last 20 30 years uh, of insider trading being prosecuted it's so hard but don't ever assume if something's going to have a good positive result you know the ceo is going to be there they know what's going to be a good result the ceo's family probably does and all the executives the ceos etc they already know that now how do they keep their mouth shut um, to other employees and then employees might start talking and it just spirals out from there so you know these sorts of things are going to happen. You know the big end of town are going to play against you. But you also know that just because you've heard the news doesn't mean it's not already out there already at this point in time. But it pays to you to look for good trending stocks. And this is the main thing is you need momentum and volatility behind you. But you also need to be patient. Um, if you've, That's why you use good momentum and trending stocks to buy and sell. And if you're just buying on possible rumors and announcements, then you're buying on speculation. And when I'm teaching traders, it's about trade on confirmation not speculation. So I won't speculate or teach my traders to speculate on an announcement like a stage three trial or, or acceptance of the FDA of some drug because that is specular, pure speculation and you're going to get it wrong a hell of a lot more. But let's have a look at the chart again and just see what we're talking about here is looking back here you can see Meso Blast has really been trading sideways uh, since this area here since the 27th of April. Obviously an expectation of something is happening but the time to buy it was a hell of a lot earlier but let's go down to the weekly chart which is much better and you can see here uh, on that weekly chart this stock really is doing okay at this point in time I do like it the time to buy this stock there's a buy signal here about three weeks ago and right now our, our students if they had bought that based on rules or our traders had bought those on, those on rules then they would have stayed, still been in this stock enjoying the profits and there's a couple of other buy rules that I can see there but right now I do like the stock I think it's going to got further to go but when you see big uh, big moves up like that over a short period of time on announcement they generally everybody spikes in and then you start to see it come back to normal momentum everything will always go back to its normal momentum but really really good question thank you for, for posing that and thanks for everybody else that did um, post comments on Mesoblast as well but just take time make sure you're getting good entries and making sure you're getting good stocks that do trend I want to look at a couple of other stocks at the moment before I finish and two of the stocks that I mentioned in my report was Flight Center and Qantas and I wanted to have a bit of a look at those with you because both of those stocks did trade up quite strongly this week and what I want to you know, let me just make those bars a little bit bigger somebody's been playing with my laptop um, and it wasn't me and let me just make them a little bit bigger so you can see you can see here how flight center has been moving up one two three four five six 
and we're in seven weeks it's been moving up and a lot of people are speculating on flights and now travel's going to be a bit of a hard industry to be in at the moment because this is sorry that's seven days up sorry it's on a daily chart that's what it, so you can see here this week the last week was a very very strong move still a bit early to be, get in on flight center at this point in time it is i do i think it's probably had its bottom yes look at the volumes that are going through this at the moment people trying to bottom pick uh, and catching falling knives and that's what we really talk about but this move sideways this could last six to twelve months or even longer and this is the point to me, it's about getting something that's moving in a direction or in a trend that you want it to be into, whether that's up or down. At this point in time, it's not moving in an uptrend. It's moving sideways, and so I wouldn't be jumping in it. It would need to break some different levels for me to get into this stock and to say to me, it is going up in a new uptrend before I would enter into the stock. Now, let's go and look at Qantas and see where that is. I'll put that on a weekly at the moment, and we'll see that. Qantas is probably doing a similar thing here. Let me just bring up that and make the bars a little bit bigger. And both of them in the travel industry. Qantas is not as bad. Obviously, it took off, moved up to beautifully up into this high in June. It's come back and found some support, but still not giving me a strong, solid signal that it's in an uptrend. But it's it's better placed, I believe, than what Flight Center is at this point in time. So just be very, very, very careful uh, getting into stocks like this, hoping that you're going to get them at a bottom price. And when you try and bottom pick, you're actually going to get it wrong more times than you're going to get it right. And what happens is you'll get stocks that'll either fall further or they'll just go sideways for periods of time. So I think flight centers probably will be um, at what I'm seeing at the moment. Next week or next month, I might have a different opinion. But right now, I think flight center might go sideways a bit. Contus, I'm a little bit more interested in. If it starts to give me more strength and start to move up with a bit more strength, then I would look at that stock to buy more long term on the stock. But generally, I don't buy airlines because airline, the industry, airline industry is very, very fickle. So, but that's it. Thank you for sending in your questions uh, this week. Uh, if you do have a question for me, please do that. But thanks for watching till the end of the video. Now, if you do have any questions that you'd like me to answer, just stick them below and I will answer them for you. So you get typing and I'll get answering remember that here on this channel we do these monday market reports every single week and we also do our live stream our australian stock market show live every tuesday night 7 to 8 p.m australian eastern time so hit the subscribe button now click the bell on the right of it so you know when we go live with our latest video i'm dal gillen the chief analyst here at wealth within goodbye good luck and good trading